Hey guys, Pringle Gaming here, welcome back to Talk The Wall. This is the 30th installment, and before we get right into your responses and any questions you may have had, if you haven't seen any of the other 29 installments, then why not go check them out? There's going to be a link in the description of this video for the last Talk The Wall, or if you'd like to access the playlist, then click the I button and you can go catch up with anything you may have missed. But as always, if you have any questions or opinions, do feel free to put them in the comments section of this video, as I want a Millwall voice throughout. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to put your score predictions for that huge FA Cup game against Watford in the comments section and feel free to add your opinions on what you felt went right and wrong in the match. Do bear in mind that I recorded this on a Monday so if anything has become outdated or if any new new stories have appeared then I'll cover them next week in the next Talk The Wall. On to your predictions for this week and obviously it is the Bradford versus Millwall game and someone actually got the score right for this game. Yes, congratulations Tunbridge Fan TV for saying you thought the game would end one apiece. He added both teams will be battling for it. Before I say any other predictions, Dylan Gaming said, haha, it came true. Dylan Gaming was actually someone who was the next closest himself as he said the game would end 1-0 to Millwall and the same people that said along the same scoreline were Joe Conway and the Veggie Tube. The next closest in terms of predicting was Liam Gaming too, who said it would end 2-1 to Millwall. He also predicted that Watford would beat us 2-0. Can I just ask, before I go any further, could you please put that in the comment section of this video so I don't forget to leave it out in the next one. I might be able to remember it, but it's just in case. Rainoration was the next person to say his prediction and he said it would be a very difficult game as their ground is a very hard place to go to and he thought that the game would end being 2 all. Jadams and Joe Holloway were the next two predictors as they said Millwall would win 3-1 and in that game Jadams added that Millwall would also beat Watford 2-1 for the Watford game obviously again can I just ask if you can put that in the comment section for this one so I can remember it for next week's Talk to Wall obviously I may well remember it but it's just in case the final person to predict was Harry CD and he thought the game would end 3-0 to Millwall he said we have the strongest squad we have had this season Moving on to your comments, and the first comment comes from Jadams, who said, The team is now solid, we've got our starting 11, Harris knows what he is doing and he is the perfect man for the job. Personally, I think Shane puts good balls into the box and he can shoot. I think we might get Jed Wallace full-time, not alone, if we do, then we go up. He also finished with, good video, meh. And then another one at the end of it was, he's one of our own, he's one of our own, Ben Thompson, he's one of our own. So let's break down what he means in terms of everything he said there. Obviously, I won't break down the songs. You kind of know, self-explanatory. But in terms of the starting 11 comment and the Harris comment, I've got to agree with you there. Harris definitely knows what he's doing. I know I questioned him a little bit at the start of the season. I'm going to be honest. It's just because I was getting frustrated with the position we're in. Obviously, I wasn't realizing how close it is in terms of the league. And plus, our squad has now sorted it out. Perhaps it was just that injury with the back line of Hutchinson that we really needed. Now, because Harris has got Jed Wallace, in. I think that he's definitely going to be the right man for the job and the fact that he's got him to the club again well that's an achievement in itself then with Ferguson I think that he's a good player I just don't know how he fits into Millwall and the way we play but don't get me wrong he's a great player coming off the bench and he does make an impact Dylan Gaming was the next person to comment he said do you think Harris should drop Archer and put King in for a change and to that I say yes I, I do but this is a hard question because you can't just say do you think you should drop Archer and put King in because there's so many things that come into the variables of this one I would like him to but then again we're not in a comfortable position yet we're not quite in the playoffs so we need to get into the playoffs first we need to go on a decent run with a couple more wins and then maybe we'll be in there and then maybe put King in but at the moment it's too much of a risk I really couldn't say whether he should put him in or not to be honest I do like King he's looked really good in the games he's played but we need playoffs we need promotion at the moment obviously that isn't what we're going to get if King goes in goal then again we might but it's a safer bet having Jordan Archer in the net until we secure our status in the league, which could mean King may not get that many games this season. Joe Holloway was the next person to say something in the comments as he said, have you heard about Sam Green and his tweets to Ben Thompson? And I have. And to be honest, I believe this is the guy that was talking about Ben's brother. This is absolutely disgraceful. I think he's also said something about Morrison, but I can't quite remember. I do remember reading this. I didn't know the person, but I kind of know if you're saying it there, then it's obviously the same person. And well, I do hate it when Mill are depicted 
as the bad guys. We're not always that bad. Yes, some of our fans do terrible things. I'm not going to lie. That does make me absolutely angry with our fans, but it makes me even more frustrated to know that it's not always Millwall fans and we're always talked so negatively about. There's always other fans that will go one step further with certain things. And well, obviously, I don't know what's happened to this guy. I'm, I'm going to be honest here. There isn't much information that I go with. Everything on Twitter, as far as I can see, has been deleted, but it was absolutely disgraceful. And if you know what happened to this guy, please let me know just so we know what's happening because it was really stupid, obviously ill thought out by the guy himself. But obviously, that's just what the game makes people do sometimes. But there's no need. There's no need to talk about people's family members like that. It's it's not on, is it really? It sh really shouldn't have gone on like that. And well, I think he'll be regretting it, but it shouldn't have happened, should it? The next person in the comment was Tunbridge Fan TV, as he said, good video and keep it up. That was followed up by Joe Holloway saying Return of the Jed, which I can tell many Millwall fans are over the moon about, as there was a lot wishing that he would sign. Let me just tell you a story. I was going on Twitter every single day seeing had Jed Wallace signed, had Jed Wallace signed. I really wanted him to sign myself. And what are the amount of you that were saying that you wanted him to sign? And well, some people went as far as joking about that they'd start their own GoFundMe page to get Jed Wallace back to the den I mean it literally went that far but it tells us how much passion we have for the lad coming back to the den and it's great to see him back Harry CD was the next person to leave his thoughts in the comments section and he said I think we've made two great signings in Wallace and Cooper and I think maybe signing a keeper on loan to challenge Archer could be a shout however our squad is right now strong enough to push for promotion now I agree with what Harry said here Cooper looks like a strong solid defender and what I've seen of him I was really impressed with the Bradford game I've also heard a lot about him and heard that he's pretty good as well so I was really happy when I saw that he'd signed for us and also with Jed Wallace well he's Jed Wallace isn't he there's no not really much I can say. It's great to have the lad back at the den. I also think that we may need another keeper. I do think that, but King looks pretty good. And well, the whole thing that Harris does, the whole philosophy is he grows the youth players and then gets them into the team. So with that, I can't see him getting someone on loan because there's not going to be a goalkeeper that wants to sit on the bench. They're wanting to play ahead of Jordan Archer. And so it'd be better to promote within our own ranks than go get someone on loan. And obviously I think that King deserves to get some football. He stayed with us just for the fact he wants football with Millwall. The next person to comment, was JD Dr. Pepsi Jew and he said no disrespect but Archer is overrated we need to strengthen our goalkeeper position like David Ford used to offer for us now before I say anything a couple of people added their thoughts to this one the first was Jadams and he said no way Harry CD then added exactly what he said above and then finally Alici said he agreed 100% with thinking that we needed another goalkeeper in now with this one myself I do believe we do need someone challenging Archer but King needs to grow and King may get better and he could be that goalkeeper you know you just don't know and it's too hard to go ahead and say oh we need someone on loan because you know what it really could hurt King and he seems a pretty decent goalkeeper so we need to see him grow he is young still so promote within our ranks that's the way I'm gonna say that one it would be nice to have another goalkeeper but again we need King to grow the final person to comment was Liam Gaming 2 and he said a lot of things so what we're gonna do we're just gonna read them all and we're gonna be breaking them down one by one the first was do you think we we'll ever make it to the Premier League? Now, before I say anything, Joe Holloway said, yeah, give it 20 years. And he responded with, haha, in it. So with this one, I think we may never get to the Premier League. Now, hear me out, hear me out before you start getting angry. Under the current ownership, it would not be possible. Don't get me wrong. I like John Berylson. I really do. I think he's done great for the club, but he doesn't have the funds to compete with the top end of the championship sides, let alone the Premier League. And to be honest, unless we get an owner who loves football and could put money into the club, then I, I can't see us going up. I really can't see us getting up to that Premier League. I mean, the, the league in the championship now, it's getting more competitive, more money's being thrown about in the championship. And so it's only a matter of time before that league becomes completely unattainable for small clubs like us. Then again, passion could get you through. But again, I don't know whether it'd be enough. I really don't. Liam next asked, do you think we beat Watford? And before I say anything, Jadam said that we would. And Liam responded with the fact that he didn't think we would. And well, with this one, I think there's a chance. But obviously, that does depend on who gets the first goal and the team that Watford put out. Obviously, Millwall will more than likely be up for the occasion. But again, will we win it? I'll let you guys make up that decision. But the fact is, there could be FA Cup magic. It 
comes around and goes around you just don't know whether it will actually happen but obviously it is what it is and I wouldn't be bothered if we got knocked out anyway. Liam then added do you think we need a new striker and Jadam said that we don't and I'm gonna be honest I have to agree with him in the past I probably would have said we do but we have Morrison scoring goals we have Gregory scoring goals we have Aiden and Fred being out to play as a striker not to mention that Aiden scores goals and also Harry Smith a lot of people have forgotten about the lad I mean I haven't he's a really good youngster he needs to be getting more game time it's frustrating to see him obviously being forgotten about since Morrison's come back but I just don't think we need anyone else there's a plenty of options within the ranks plenty of players that can do the job but obviously if one of the Gregory or Morrison gets injured it could be a problem but we seem to be scoring goals from other areas of the pitch sometimes as well the next two questions were to do with the playoffs and what he said would do you think we could get into the playoffs and do you reckon we'll win them and to both I think yes now that does require us to main unbeaten to get into the playoffs and well if we do then who knows we could get automatics but again I might be getting ahead of myself there and well, I just think that we do have a strong enough squad. We need to challenge for it. And you never know what could happen. We could obviously get the automatic promotions. Or again, we could just stay in League One and not get playoffs completely anyway. So I do hope that answers your question on do you think we're staying in League One. His second to last question was, will we beat Bradford? And to that, I say that I thought we would beat them 1-0. And I thought it'd be a scrappy, lucky goal. The final question that Liam asked was, what position do we need to strengthen in? And well, I don't think we need to strengthen in anywhere in the pitch at the moment. Because if you think about it, Jed is another option as he can play on both wings and in the centre of the pitch. And well, Jake Cooper looks like a good use of a loan. He's a very tall defender and he looks like he's more than capable of doing a job, especially when he played so well against a team like Bradford. So providing no one gets injured, we shouldn't need to strengthen anymore and that should be as signings done in this window. Let's move on to this week's loan watch. Yes, there are 10 players out on loan, including four senior members of the squad. And our first stop is League One, where Greg Wilde's Northampton side played away from home to MK Dons. Now, they lost 5-3, and while that is a bad result, Greg came off the bench in the 61st minute for Harry Beautyman, and well, they were losing 3-0, and he made an instant impact, scoring in the same minute with an absolutely outstanding strike. I'm sure you could see it somewhere on the internet. It was a fantastic goal by Wild, but obviously he's got a lot of work to do, but I hope he performs well. I hope he does come back to the den and plays well, but then again, it's just a difficult story. So we just have to see where it goes. We now drop down a league into League 2, where Paris Cohen Hall's Wickham side took on Luton and drew 1-1. Paris played 66 minutes before being subbed off. Sid Nelson's Newport County side also got an important point as they ended the game with a 0-0 draw. Now, Sid has become an important part of the five of the back system in their defence over in Wales. Uh, but I do really think they have to thank their goalkeeper, Joe Day, for being in inspired form to stop them from conceding. But that is such a valuable point. David Ford didn't play, though, as Portsmouth's match against Crawley Town was postponed due to a frozen pitch. That isn't the last time you'll be hearing about a frozen pitch, though. There's quite a few of those coming up. Moving on to the conference, and our first stop is Braintree Town, where Chris Twaddock and Kyron Farrell currently are. Twaddock played the full game, and Kyron Farrell came on in the 83rd minute as Braintree took an impressive point against second in the league, Forest Green Rovers. Paul Rooney also played on this weekend as Torquay United went to Maidstone United, but were unable to stop his side losing 2-1 when he played the full match. Now, Harry Gerlin didn't play for Welland United against Dartford as that game was also called off due to a frozen pitch. The same with Kyron Mundell-Smith, the youngster that has recently gone out and joined a club called Free Bridges FC. He didn't play their game against Herne Bay because that was also postponed due to a frozen pitch. And the same goes for Alfie Pavey, who has joined Hampton and Richmond Borough FC as he couldn't play the game against Ghostport Borough as again the pitch was frozen and it was postponed. Now, if you didn't know, Millwall played against Brad Bradford City at the weekend and they drew 1-0. The game seemed to be a fantastic game to watch. I'm going to be honest, I had to see the highlights and well, it looked like Bradford were the better side, but Millwall and Bradford both hit the crossbar in the game. They both did it a couple of times. Millwall were very threatening from corners. <laughs> I never expected to say that, I'm going to be honest. Millwall don't usually threaten from corners, but it seems like Cooper is very good in the air. Now, obviously, Millwall brought Jake Cooper into the team for Hutchinson. Reasons I will say later to run in the Millwall news. And well, Cooper had a great game. He looks like a really impressive sign-in. Millwall obviously took the lead for a Lee Gregory goal, whose persistence paid off as he could have gone down and won a penalty, but he stayed on his feet and eventually 
tucked it into the back of the net. Mill did obviously concede and it all started with a great cross or shot. Well, I say that, but I really don't know what Mark Marshall was doing. Either way, it worked as the ball almost went off the pitch before James Meredith slid the ball into the back of the net, beating Sean Cummings to that ball and making it one apiece. Jed Wallace did come off the bench for Millwall and he impressed and had a chance pretty much straight away when he first came off the bench. And that brings me to the player of the week. And well, it's not quite player of the week, but it's the man of the match, in my opinion, against Bradford City. And I'm going to go with Lee Gregory as he was great moving forward and scored a very important goal, which at the time gave Millwall the lead. Now, before you go and say anything, I know Fred had a fantastic game and well, Fred probably could have been put there, but I went with Lee Gregory just for the fact without him, we wouldn't have been in the game and we wouldn't have been drawing. It was a big week for Millwall and let's have a look at what happened this week in the Millwall news. And the first story comes as defender Sean Hutchinson is injured. Surprise, surprise. I know some of you may will be thinking, well, this is going to be really bad. He's going to be out for ages. Well, it isn't such a bad injury. It seems to only be a little one. He had a tight calf against Cholton and that's why Jake Cooper came in as Harris said that it should only take a couple of weeks for Hutchinson to be back. Well, that's what we're hoping we're hoping it won't be too much longer than obviously it needs to be because we need him back in that middle team. Another story comes from Neil Harris as he said that Marlon Romeo could be a midfield option. Now, Romeo does play centre-back for his national side and he has been playing as a right winger and centre midfielder for the youth team. And Harris said, should he need him in a more advanced role, then he would be more than capable of playing in the centre of midfield. Let's move on to a player that will be staying with Millwall until the summer of 2018 as the 21-year-old goalkeeper Tom King has signed a new deal with the Lions. He signed this on Friday. Now he's played five times for Millwall, which was in every single Checker Trade Trophy games and one in the Capital One Cup against Nottingham Forest. And that's all since making his Lions debut this season. This week has been a busy week for Millwall in terms of signing players as they made two signings on Thursday. The first was a return to the den for Jed Wallace. This was Millwall's worst kept secret as so many news outlets and high profile individuals linked with Millwall was saying that they wanted the deal to be done so they could announce a deal. Well, obviously they wanted a deal to be announced. They didn't say what, but it was kind of obvious with the way that Millwall fans were really hyping it up and really wanted him to sign. Now, it was finally agreed and, well, the person that actually released the news was Millwall midfielder Sean Williams. Obviously, a few people there will be upset that he announced the news, but who cares? Jed Wallace is back at the den. And, well, it's Jed's second spell with the Lions after he joined us last season online where he played 12 times scoring one goal and getting four assists. Now this is a loan deal until the end of the season but there is a clause in the end of his contract which says that he could sign at the end of that loan spell with us on a permanent deal should he wish to and should we want to. Jed has actually come here because he said he has unfinished business with the club and wants to get us promoted after not doing it the first time. I mentioned that on Thursday Mill signed two players. So who is the second player you ask? Well it's a six foot six tall defender from Reading, Jake Cooper. He signed on loan until the end of the season. Well, what I've heard of him, he seems to be really impressive. And well, he played really well against Bradford, so it seems like he could be a great sign and he seems to be a good threat from corners. And well, he looks really good at defending. So this could be a good deal for us. Now, the final bit of Millwall news is to do with Wickham Wanderers wanting to sign Paris Cohen Hall on a permanent deal. Now, his loan expires at the end of the month and Millwall would be hoping to get some money out of the player if he's not part of Neil Harris's plans as his contract does end at the end of the season. So that is all we got time for for today. Do feel free to put your questions and opinions in the comments section for the next Talk to Wall. However, before I go, don't forget to put your score predictions for that Watford game in the FA Cup in the comments section as next week I'll be covering that game and highlighting the good and bad points. So while you're down there, don't forget to tell me your opinions of the match and Millwall as a whole. So like, comment, subscribe and of course I will see you guys next week for the next Talk to Wall. But until then, Goodbye.